Hello G.I. Joe fans, HCC788 here. I love the Dreadnoughts, and my favorite Dreadnought is this one, Buzzer. This is a much anticipated figure. I've been looking forward to getting a rendition of Buzzer in the 6-inch classified series. But there is one flaw on this figure that I find very annoying, and we shall look at it. Let's look at the packaging. The front of the box has some toy photography with a photograph of the Buzzer action figure in an action pose with some nice nice Easter eggs like the cold slither references and the cans of grape soda. The photography on the box promises a really good action figure inside. We have some character artwork and we see Buzzer is wearing the round lensed sunglasses that he has in the comic book series and this is a little different from the vintage figure but I prefer this. I'm glad they went in that direction. We have pictures of the accessories. There is the G.I. Joe classified series logo and that G.I. Joe is embossed a little bit. That's very nice. It says Cobra Dreadnought Buzzer, and he's not technically a Cobra agent, but the Dreadnoughts do work for Cobra a lot, so I think that's okay. Top of the box just has G.I. Joe Classified Series, and that's also embossed. That's really nice. It's very high quality. I like that very much. This side of the box has some character artwork and the Cobra emblem and a blue background and this QR code. On the last QR code, it just took us to to the Hasbro website. Under the QR code, we have these symbols which represent his specialties, and they are much too small for me to see. Fortunately, they are larger on the back of the box. This figure is number 106 in the classified series. That's reflected on the back of the box as well. Then there is a picture of the figure and the accessories and close-ups of some of the details. Then we have these symbols which represent his specialties. This one means he is poisonous. This is one of those 2001 A Space Odyssey monoliths. This means he is is shocking, and this means he is made of atoms. On the other side of the box, we have that character art repeated. It looks really good, and the 106. Let's take this figure out of the box. I have opened this before, so this is not a first time unboxing, but let's look at the figure itself and see what we think about it. Here is Buzzer out of the box, and at first glance, this looks like an excellent action figure, but I have a couple problems with it. Have you spotted them yet? They will become evident momentarily. I recently reviewed another Dreadnought figure, the classified version of Ripper, and I really liked this figure. I was expecting to like Buzzer even more, but after looking at the two, I still prefer Ripper. This six-inch classified version of Buzzer copies a lot of the details from the first Buzzer action figure from 1985. Obviously, the three and three-quarter inch figure can't have as much detail as the six-inch figure, and usually these six-inch classified figures do a good job of upsizing the design of the vintage figure but adding detail and having accessories removable that were just sculpted on the original. Let's look at classified Buzzer's accessories and this is where we start to run into a problem with this figure. Buzzer is wearing sunglasses. It's a bit different from the silver sunglasses on the vintage figure but these sunglasses look like the ones he had in the comic book series which I really like. They were very distinctive but these sunglasses are a big problem. Usually with these classified figures that have removable glasses, they stay on really well once you put them on, but these I cannot get to stay on for the life of me. They will just fall off. So I have resorted to using mounting putty to keep them on his face. The sunglasses themselves are in a silver flexible plastic, which they should be, and they have black painted lenses. The sunglasses themselves are not bad. They look really good, and they would look great on the figure if I could keep them on. I must have fiddled with these things for an hour before I finally gave up on keeping them on without assistance, and I resorted to mounting putty over one of Buzzer's eyes. I wish I could say leaving the sunglasses off is an option, but this just does not look like Buzzer without the sunglasses. It looks like Stephen from G.I. Joburg in a blonde wig, which is fine. Stephen's a good-looking fellow, but he doesn't look like Buzzer. The next accessory is Buzzer's primary weapon, his chainsaw. It wouldn't be Buzzer without the chainsaw. This is what he is most known for. And this chainsaw is a bit more of a traditional chainsaw than the chainsaw assault weapon thing that the vintage figure came with. Some modern versions of Buzzer came with chainsaws similar to this. It's a bit more like 
like a chainsaw you would get at the hardware store than the vintage accessory, but I'm okay with that as long as he has a chainsaw. The chainsaw itself is primarily in gray plastic. It has some technical detail and an exhaust pipe. It has a grip at the back and this foregrip in the center that he can hold with his other hand, so he can hold it two-handed. This is made of a soft plastic. It's not hinged. I thought it was, but it's really just a soft plastic so it can flex a bit. The chainsaw blade itself is silver with gray teeth. It's really nicely detailed and looks like a chainsaw. It looks exactly as it should. He has a couple holstered accessories on these bands around his thighs. On his right leg he has a knife with a silver blade and a gray handle. And on his right leg he has a pistol. The pistol is small and gray and it has this wrapping around the grip. I like the wrapping around the grip. It's a nice touch. You know these are dreadnoughts so pretty much anything they own is damaged in some way. Bozer has a couple other accessories. He has this chain blade weapon with a silver chain and a silver blade in a crescent shape and it's on a gray handle with wrapping around it. It's a good looking accessory and it mimics the chain blade weapon from the vintage figure. It does not have the chip in the blade that's seen on the vintage accessory. Missed opportunity. The final accessory is this baseball bat with a blade on it. It looks like a circular saw blade has been cut in half and then placed on a baseball bat. There's a silver blade and a silver spike, a gray bat, and then silver wrapping around the base of the bat. And I guess that silver wrapping might be duct tape or something. That'd make it kind of dreadnought like this does not have any analog in the vintage accessories this is new it is very dreadnought like i don't mind it what i do mind is these two accessories are extra there's nowhere to holster them this buzzer figure does not include a backpack so there's no place to hook them on these just have to be left in the box or something when he's not carrying them with the accessories out of the way let's take a look at the articulation on buzzer he has standard classified articulation articulation, which is always really good. So he can move his head from left to right and look up and down and all the way around. Great range of motion at the head. He can swing his arm up at the shoulder, swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has butterfly joints at the shoulder. He has a swivel at the upper bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a swivel at the wrist and hinges at the wrist, up and down hinges. He has a hinge at the rib cage, so he has an ab crunch with a good range of motion and a good ratchet too. He has a ball and socket joint at the waist so he can move at the waist with a good range of motion. He can do the splits. He can move his leg at the hip forward pretty well and backward a little bit. He has a swivel at the thigh cut, but on mine it's really tight. He should be able to swivel at that thigh cut. He has double jointed knees. He has a swivel at the boot cut and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the details on Buzzer. He has an expressive face. He is baring his teeth. He has very yellow blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail. This is all fine. It looks very much like Buzzer. He even has a very subtle five o'clock shadow on his face. This all looks really good, but without the sunglasses, it does not look like Buzzer. He has a khaki shirt with the sleeves ripped off, and that detailing around the rips on the sleeves looks really good, very nice touch. He has an open collar, and behind that collar you can see his chest, and they've printed on some chest hair. It may be a small detail, but it makes the figure look more realistic. I like that a lot. On that khaki shirt, he has a green strap going over his right shoulder that goes all the way over his back, and on that strap he has some gray grenades. Looks like a smoke grenade and uh, an old pineapple grenade. It looks like that strap on the right side side is supposed to line up with this green patch on the belt, but of course if you move the figure around that won't line up. On the left side of his chest he has a gold star badge, like a sheriff's badge, and some silver dog tags. This mimics the details on the version 1 figure who had these badges, these trophy badges, probably taken from his victims. And I think it looks really good, and that shiny paint looks excellent. 
excellent. It really pops. His arms are bare, just like the vintage figure, and he has some printed arm hair on his forearms. That's another really nice touch. These small things really enhance the look of the figure. On his left arm, he has a tattoo, and as with the vintage figure, it looks like it is a serpent with a dagger. He has brown gloves, and on his right wrist, he has a narrow brown band, and on his left wrist, he has a wide brown watch band, and that watch face is painted on. That looks excellent. On his waist, he has light blue dungarees with a wide studded belt. He's got silver studs on those belt, and then green patches where the strap on the chest connects to the belt. That's very nice. He has a silver skull and crossbones belt buckle. Very nice detail, very dreadnought-like. And then he has this black padding over his crotch. Hey, you gotta protect the family jewels. On his legs, he has light blue dungarees, and there are some seam lines and some fabric texture that looks really good. Then around his thighs, he has these pads or armor pieces. They have gray straps and black armor plate on the legs. I guess that's armor plate. At least that's how I'm interpreting it, because that's how it looked on the vintage figure. On the right side, he has the sheath for the knife, and on the left side, he has the holster for the pistol, which I guess could mean that Buzzer is left-handed. He has some black or really kind of gunmetal gray knee pads, and then we finish it up with some gray biker boots with some stirrups with silver rings and lots of straps on it. I don't know why you would need that many straps and buckles. It may take him forever to take his boots off, but they look really good. Is classified Buzzer as good as the vintage figure? Not to me. Obviously. Obviously, it has more detail and more accessories at this larger scale, but the vintage figure could hold all of his accessories. He had a backpack, and even though I like the style of the classified sunglasses more, at least the vintage figure has sunglasses that won't fall off. Is classified buzzer as good as classified ripper? Not in my opinion. That classified ripper did almost everything right. Great accessories, great detail. He can hold all of his accessories, and yes, his sunglasses don't fall off. On a side note, I just wanted to show off this Knox Grape Soda that I got from Assembly Required in Des Moines, Iowa in November. And this is a really cool thing. It fits perfectly with these Dreadnought action figures. And this is why you've got to make it to G.I. Joe conventions if you can, is to get cool, unique stuff like this. That's Buzzer, a nice figure that... That should have been my favorite classified Dreadnought action figure, but has a couple flaws that I just can't get around. Yes, the problem with the sunglasses is an easy fix with some mounting putty, but that's not how these reviews work. I'm not reviewing a custom, I'm reviewing what comes out of the box, and I should not have to fix it to make it work the way it's supposed to. Maybe it's just my example. Maybe other buzzer action figures work just fine, but I can only review what's in front of me. Please let me know if you have the same problem with buzzer's sunglasses, or if you don't have that problem on yours. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and share this video with your friends. That's what helps this channel grow. You can find me on social media, and I have a website, a hcc 788com and if you like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get some special perks like early access to some videos and get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'll be back soon with more vintage and modern G.I. Joe. Until then, remember, only the Dreadnoughts are the Dreadnoughts.